Baptist Christian Center. We're so glad you joined us today, and those that are here in the sanctuary, just um, so glad to have you, and want to just invite each and every one of you to to join it, to join in with what God has for you today. And uh, we know that God is here. Excuse me, I'm having a little. Okay, I'm on now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say audio problems. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, I'm welcoming you all here to Oasis and just invite you to join in with us what God has for you today. And um, I'm going to read from Psalms chapter 95, verses 1 through 3, and this is in the Passion Translation. It says, Come on, everyone. Let's sing for joy to the Lord. Let's shout our loudest praises to our God who saved us. Everyone can meet his face with a thankful heart. Don't hold back your praises. Make him great by your shouts of joy. For the Lord is the greatest of all. God, he is the greatest of all. King God over all other gods. Amen. He is King yes, God. He is. Isn't he? Yes, he, he is. is above all other gods. And he is worthy to be praised today. So we just come before him today with thankful hearts. Thankful for all that he's done for us, all that he has uh, brought us through, and everything that he has is uh, with us but for eternity. Amen. That's something to be thankful for. Yes. Something to praise him for and shout his glory. So let's just go into praise and worship this morning. I'll turn it over to the praise team at this time. God bless you. Glory to God. Well, we're just going to do some... Uh, uh, taking authority right now. We're not going to put up with it. How dare he touch our pastor's opening. <laughs> Devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And we forbid you to operate in this service in the name of Jesus. You will take your hands off every part from beginning right now to the end in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in, on Facebook and in this service live in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know there is power in the name?
out this morning. He is so very good. So very good. Good to see our friends this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He reigns. He reigns. Oh, he reigns.
because I was not here Wednesday night and was not feeling well, but to God be all the glory, I'm standing here today. So I'm telling you, God is good. He, when, when we, which we're fixing to speak over our tithes and offerings, because we've come to that time to honor God with our tithes. We here at Oasis believe in the tithe, which is a tenth. That's where it first begins. And so we're going to speak over our offering today. But I do want to say that one of the things that we say is he rebukes the devourer. He rebukes the devourer for our sake. And you know the devourer can come in a lot of ways. It can come in an unexpected bill or it can come in an unexpected illness. Something that just, you know, takes you down, maybe a little headache or something like that. Just something that gets you off focus. The devil's always trying to get you off focus. And he's trying to get you off focus about your finances as well. And God says, put it in my hands because I'm going to cover that for you. And I know it sounds backwards to the world, but you know what? We're in this world, but we're not of it. And so our ways of managing money and our ways of treating money and the things that we have is we are not a reservoir. We are a river. We give out. God says he loves a cheerful giver. And y'all know laughter does good like a medicine. So I thank God for all the helping hands that came my way this week. Of course, they were sent by God. I know that. He rebuked the devourer for my sake, and I'm sure he's done it for each one of you and for you on Facebook. And so we're going to give God the honor by speaking over our tithes and offerings. We are going to hold them in our right hand because we are doing the right thing for God. We are going by the way of his word which says the tithe, and that's a tenth, so that's where we begin. And I also want to say Happy Father's Day. We have a lot to be thankful for there as well, like uh, Patty said, even for the ones that aren't with us. All right, so Father God, as I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, Favorable settlements, Favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances. Interest, and income, interest and income, rebates and returns, rebates and returns. Discounts, and discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Gifts, and gifts and surprises, finding money, finding money. Bills, decreased. bills decreased, bills paid off, bills paid off. Blessings, and increase. blessings and increase, blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. 
thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we do here at Oasis Christian Center. And we have ways that you can sow a seed into this good ministry. And we are Oasis Christian Center, a family church, post office box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. The postage paid envelope that I was holding up, that as well. You can stop by the church and pick those up. You can give Ish a call on our church mobile. That is 334-520-7538. We also have paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church as well as text to give. This is 334-274-7885. And we have a new online giving. It's https forward slash osvhub.com forward slash Oasis Family Church forward slash funds. This is where the laughter doeth good like a medicine comes in. All right. And then, but we are oasisfamilychurch.net. You can go there. You'll find all the ways to donate. You'll see a little button that says donate. You can just press on that. Or you can use Cash App. That's an easy way a lot of people like to do. It's just a dollar sign, Oasis Family Church. Very simple. All right. Today, we have a message from Pastor on, on prayer. Absolutely. Prayer changes things. And I want to thank everybody for praying for me this week because prayer works. Absolutely. So we're going to turn it over to pastors. Glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That was a little pitiful. <laughs> thank you very much. You're going to have to rock. You're going to have to share. That's good. Thank you, Daddy. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad God has a sense of humor. Amen. So we're so honored to be in the house of God this morning, amen. amen, here to worship our Heavenly Father, and we just want to say, God, happy Father's Day, amen, amen. amen. what an awesome God we serve, amen. and we want to say happy Father's Day again to all you dads out there, and we just honor your, you, this is your day, and we honor you, amen, amen. we are thankful for dads, amen. praise God. And uh, so before I turn it over to Pastor this morning, I want to just speak a word of blessing over you. So be ready to receive. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are a believer. You believe the Word of God. You are what the Word of God says you are. You have what the Word of God says you have. And you can do what the Word of God says you can do. We render in effect of every negative word that you have spoken. Every negative thing that you have thought, every word and thought that is contrary to the truth of the Word of God, I declare from this moment forward, you acknowledge only the good things that are in you, in Christ Jesus. Out of the good treasure of your heart, only good things will come to pass. I declare you are the righteousness of God, a new creation, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus. You have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. You have been redeemed from the, by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed from the curse of the law, redeemed from sickness and disease, poverty and death. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror. You ne he never leaves you or forsakes you. Since the greater one dwells in you, you can overcome every situation. We believe it in our heart and we release it with our mouth. So be it. It will surely come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. In Praise Jesus' God. name. That's who you are today. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn it over to Pastor at this time. Well, it's time to do neighbor looking time. I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to smile at your neighbor. I want you to point at your neighbor. I want you to say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, and I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day? And I declare, and I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 ever, ever be the same, be the same again, again, again in Jesus' in name. Jesus Glory name. to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 
Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this service. And Father, we just thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing. And that your people make a strong drawing on the anointing of God. We thank you for answers coming in your presence this day. Holy Spirit, help me as I preach this day, as I teach. Help me to say what I should say and leave off anything I should leave off. And Father God, we are teaching and preaching your word. And you said signs and wonders follow your word. So we're expecting to see signs and wonders follow this word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. <clears throat> now, I want you to go in Matthew 21 and 3. And I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to start out 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. I'm in the Passion Translation. And uh, I just like the scripture a lot. Um, it says, make your life a prayer. I just love that scripture. Because um, that's really what our life should be. Just in and out of prayer. In and out of prayer. In and out of prayer. We're praying about this situation. That situation. Our whole life. We're just praying in and out. Our, through our day. Through our week. And um, just make your life a prayer. Now, I know I've got y'all in Matthew 21 and 3. I'm reading out of the New American Standard. And he said to them, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer. And that's what we are. Amen? Yes. Now, we can't wait until trouble comes to pray. Amen. We must be offensive in our praying. Yes. We must be more intentional in our prayers. Um, when we pray, it brings the fingerprints of God into our lives, into our situations, our problems. And the Holy Spirit is helping us. And we talked about before that one of the names for the Holy Spirit or the, the name for the Holy Spirit is Paraclete. And to, to take the, the meaning of that is to take hold together with against. So anytime we're praying, the Holy Spirit is trying to take hold together with us against whatever we're praying about. He's trying to help us if we'll let Him. He is our battle partner, so to speak. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So when we pray, there's a divine alignment that happens. Our steps are ordered of the Lord. I don't know if y'all have ever noticed it, but sometimes if I forget to pray about something, it just won't work out right. My steps won't be ordered right. And if I pray about it and I spend a little time asking the Lord about it, I find out that I'm right on time. I'm not behind, but I'm right on time. I mean, I'm in the right place at the right time. It, it amazes me what prayer does. It, it divinely aligns our steps. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now... King James Version of Isaiah 43 and 26 says, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare that thou mayest be justified. Now, I'm reading a little bit in this little portion here out of uh, Kenneth Hagin, a book that he had. Um, and it's about pleading your case. Now, he said in the book, put in remembrance. What he's saying is to remind God of his promises. And that's one thing that I have learned, and I don't want to say it that way to, to state like I'm arrogant that I know it. I am learning. Uh, let's just say I'm in the kindergarten stage of learning about how to put the Word of God into prayers. I always try to line up my prayers with the Word of God, but I'm learning more now about actually inserting the Word of God, praying the specific Scriptures, knowing what Scriptures I'm standing on because it makes such a big difference. So we're reminding God of His promises when we pray. And we're laying our case legally before the Lord and pleading it like a lawyer would plead the case. You know, a lawyer is constantly bringing up, well, here's the precedent for this. Well, here's the promise for this. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Here's Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be shown to be in the wrong. I'm, I'm pleading my case in this scripture. I'm pleading that case over my family. I'm pleading this over this situation that I'm facing. Um, he said, God said, bring up his word, his covenant promises, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare that thou mayest be justified. Now, God is asking us to, to remind him of his word. He loves it when we do that. And so we're going to find scriptures that promise or covers the case of the, the problems that we're putting out before the Lord. Be very intentional about those scriptures. Definite, definite promises 
that promise the things that we're praying for. If we have a financial need, uh, Philippians 4 and 19, For my God, but my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now we all know that scripture, but I'm learning if I'm going to petition the Lord for it, if I'm going to petition for I've got a bill coming up and I, I might not have the, the exact amount of money for that bill at today's date, but I'm going to remind the Lord of that scripture. That scripture says, but my God shall supply all of my need according to His riches and glory. I'm reminding Him of His own word and He loves it when I do it. And He's, he's wanting to perform that promise in my life, but He wants me to know His word. He wants me to quote His word back to Him. And I'm telling you, it puts a, a superpower, if you will, on our praying. And a lot of times, there's situations we don't know the, the exact verses, but the Holy Spirit will show us. If we'll ask the Holy Spirit, He'll illuminate different scriptures over different uh, situations that we should be praying. We just have to ask Him, and we have to do our homework by searching the Word. But we have to be very intentional and find the scriptures that definitely promise us the things that we need and we come according to God's word and God's word never fails Amen. now in the contemporary English version this is Jeremiah 1 and 12 the Lord then said you are right for I am watching over my word until it's fulfilled I love that now John 14 and 14 says if you shall ask anything in my name I'll do it now I know um, years ago I read this scripture and I read this little booklet, you know, from Kenneth Hagin. And I remember him saying that one of the, the greatest Bible scholars of the day, back when he was coming up, had mentioned that John 14 and 14, there was a more literal translation of that verse. And it says, even if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. Now, I love that, that scripture. Matter of fact, I've given the testimony over and over and I'm not going to go into detail of it. But I stood on John 14 and 14 and on the translation that even if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. I was working at a factory job and, and I, you know, there's no way I can get on first shift. It's just not possible. I don't have the seniority to do it. You have to have like 20 years or more in seniority to do it, to get on a first shift job. And they didn't have any first shift jobs at the time. I started claiming that scripture every day. I started declaring, you know, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Even if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. I kept declaring it, declaring it, declaring it. And they created five first shift jobs, and I got the fifth one. You say, well, that was a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. Now, you may, you know, a lot of people don't recognize the reason that they don't see God working in their life is they don't recognize Him. He's working all around Him. But a soulish man or a soulish woman can't see it. You've got to be able to open your eyes and recognize that was God that answered that prayer. That was God that created those jobs. It was God that showed me, gave me that book, put that book in my hands so that I would understand the scriptures, that I would have greater understanding of that word to know how to pray that promise. Y'all still here? You went home. John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And Isaiah 55 and verse number 10 for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. This is verse number 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. That's, it, it, it's not going to come back empty. But it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sin it. So if we're praying a prosperity promise, that promise is going to be the fulfillment of that promise is to bring us prosperity, to bring us the provision. Um, if, if we're praying a healing promise, the, the provision of that promise is to bring us healing. Um, whatever that promise has got in it, it's, it's alive and full of power. And God wants it in our mouth, in our heart, in our mouth, in our heart coming out of our mouth, in our heart coming out of our mouth. And we will have what we say in line with the word of God. But we need to be more intentional in our praying. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm bring it down a notch because uh, I'm going to throw any, any religious thinking, I'm going I'm to throw it out of, the, out of the boat right now, okay? Right. Now, I'm going to tell you little bitty things, some, some really little bitty things. And see, religious people or, or soulish people, they can't, they can't reconcile little things in God. They say God's not concerned about the little things. He's not concerned about... You know, the, the little bit of gas that you're believing for to get to your job. He's not concerned about little bitty things in your life. I'm telling you, he is. Yeah. Now, I'll give you a real, real little one. We were going to a restaurant, 
And um, as when we go to the restaurant, now I got this from Joyce Meyer years ago. I, I, I got the revelation of this. She said that she, her and Dave, her husband, would go to a restaurant and she'd just have the, the, the food would be so bad. And if the food wasn't bad, the next time it would be, she'd be in an area that it was just drama and loud and just junk going on. And she's not enjoying, you know, her time at the restaurant. She just said, you know, it happened to her over and over and over and again. And she realized she needs to start covering the times that she's going out. She needs to start covering it in prayer. So she started covering it in prayer. She started, you know, declaring like what, what I've learned like from her and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit kind of added some things on it for us. But we pray, and, and Pastor Sharon was praying this particular day. We were going to a restaurant, one of our favorite places to eat. And uh, as we were going, she's praying that we have favor with God and favor with man. And as she's praying that, she said, we have favor with the host or hostess. We have favor with the waiter or waitress. We have favor over our food. We have favor over our service. We have favor over everything concerned, where we're sitting, everything about it. Well, when we got to the restaurant, there's a certain spot that we like in this restaurant better than any other spot. We can sit anywhere. We don't have to be funny about it. But there's one particular you know, spot that we, we do. We have a favorite table in the restaurant. And um, as I noticed, when we were walking in of, you know, by the, the windows of the restaurant, they had the, the chairs were on the tables in this area that we, we like our, our favorite tables in. They had the chairs were on every single table in that area. So that area was closed off. And not only was it closed off, but the chairs, you couldn't even sit there at all. And so I said, you know, I'm not going to say anything about this today where, you know, we would prefer or anything like that. I'm not going to cause any kind of, you know, problem for them or anything like that. We walked up to the hostess. And she'd only waited on us one time, and I didn't even remember, but she said, um, you guys, we didn't say anything about where we wanted to sit or anything. She said, you guys, uh, y'all have a certain spot that y'all like. She said, follow me. And I was like, she must not know that they've closed it off. She must not know that the chairs are on top of every table in that room. And um, anyway, we went back there. She, she removed a couple of the chairs told us to, to be seated in our favorite spot. Now, you can say what you want to. I didn't even ask for it. I mean, we asked in prayer, but I didn't even ask for it. That was the Lord. That was the Lord. I tell you. Now, hang on, because some people won't recognize that as being God because it's so such a little thing, a little insignificant thing. It was God. Amen. Amen. It was God. Hallelujah. Now, we've learned if somebody is doing work for us, okay, we are, we're really delegating our authority. You're delegating your authority when you're letting somebody work for you. If somebody's working on your car, you're delegating the authority of them doing that thing right. And if you pray about it, I don't know if y'all have ever had your car worked on and had somebody that, that how can I say this? <laughs> they're, they're not able to fix it or find the actual root of the problem but you're paying the money every time they try. Y'all yes. y'all still with me and gone home. Yes. Yes. And and my lightning fast mind figured it out after a few times. I need to be praying for this person that's working on this thing. Because, you know, they might be brilliant, but they might not be able to see what what the actual root of this problem is. And I need to pray that the eyes of their understanding, Ephesians prayers, that they would be opened. The eyes of their understanding. They're working on my stuff. I need to pray that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened according to the hope of His calling. That they, they would recognize, and in Colossians 1 and 9, says that they would have perfect knowledge. I need them to have perfect knowledge of what they're working on. So that, I mean, it'll go beyond what they, they know in the natural. Um, there was a situation many, many years ago. And um, our car was broke down in uh, right outside of... Um, Dothan, Alabama, and it was a mess. I mean, we were broke down, and this man helped us get to this um, this place to work on the car, and I went and talked to the guy that was going to work on the car, and, and he said, I ain't got time to fool with it. I said, well, but we have we have no way. We're 100 miles from home almost, and we got no way to get back home. I mean, I don't, I mean, it was a mess, and uh, we didn't have the cash to, to, to get a rental car at that time. This is many, 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 many years ago, and I'm like, what are we going to do? And we were with another couple. And Pastor Sharon and the, the other lady, we, we got them to start praying. 
And I'm talking about they're, they're praying in the Spirit. And they are praying and praying and praying and praying in the Spirit. And I, I'd, I'd go back and I'd talk to the guy a little bit more. I said, well, can you at least look at it? And he said, uh, I don't have time to fool with it. I'm, I, you can park it here and I, I'd call you in a few days. And I said, a few days is not going to work for me. We, we, we don't even have transportation to go anywhere else. There's no, I mean, this is, this is in the boondocks. If you live in Dothan, I'm sorry, but it, it was at that time. You were forever, forever away from, we weren't in the city of Dothan. Uh, it might have been the city limits, but we were in the miles and miles and miles. And all there was was trees and, and roads. And we're like, I don't know what we're going to do. And they kept praying in the Spirit, kept praying in the Spirit, kept praying in the Spirit. And the guy, he did look at the car and he said, I don't know what it is. And then he, he's one of the most disinterested people I've ever seen in my whole life. I mean, he just could care less about our situation. And I mean, it was just, and it just, uh, it just, they kept praying in the Spirit. They kept praying in the Spirit. They kept praying in the Spirit. They're praying in the Spirit over this thing. And uh, declaring some things. And then um, the guy, I, I talked to him again and again. He went to eat. His house was right there at where he's doing it. He went to eat. And, you know, after about 45 minutes, I'm knocking on the door. I said, uh, can you come out and look at my car? He said, I ain't got time to fool with it. And he, he came on out and he went back to doing something else. And this is no lie. They're still praying in the Spirit. They're praying about this situation. We've all been praying. but um, And they were praying in the Spirit. And... Uh, then, this is no lie, <laughs> she's my witness and the other couple would be my witness. All of a sudden, this guy, I'm not trying to, to belittle him, but he never, never looked like he had a, ever thought in his head. I mean, he, he didn't look like, you know, I mean, he was not interested in our situation whatsoever. And I don't know how on God's earth, God, God got an impossible situation on how he's going to get this man to fix our car because I'm... I'm pretty sure, Lord God, have mercy on us. We are in the middle of the boondocks. We can't even get out. Anyway, they've been praying in the Spirit. We were declaring some things. And then all of a sudden, honest to, honest to God, it looked like a light hit this man. It, it was the illumination of the Holy Spirit. It looked, like, it looked like light came on behind his eyes. And all of a sudden, behind his eyes, it was like he had a thought. <laughs> And next thing I know, this is honest truth. This man was running. I couldn't even get him walk over to my car. And he run over to my car. He run past me. And he said, you got the keys? I said, here they are. He, he, he got the car. He, he did something real quick. Then he runs to somewhere else in his shop. And I'm like, what in the world is going on with this guy? And then he, he, he grabs my fuse box. And he, he slaps a fuse out, puts a new fuse in. And he cranks the car up. And he said, now it's fixed. And I was like, oh my God. God took a man that couldn't, didn't, didn't have the knowledge. We prayed that knowledge into him. The Holy Spirit. Take hold together with against. The Holy Spirit. And we're talking about spirit-led prayer. And we're talking about quoting the word prayer. You understand there's different types of prayer, different situations. But this particular situation, I said all that to say this. You got somebody working on something for you, you better be praying for it. <laughs> You better be praying for me. You're going to pay a whole bunch of money. You know, we paid like 14 bucks. Something, it was a, 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 a small amount of money. And I was like, oh my God. God just did a miracle for us. It'll always be a miracle for us. It, it's something that we just remember all the time about answered prayer. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we need to be intentional in our praying. We need to be laser focused. More intentional in praying the Word and praying in the Spirit. Um, Pastor Sharon's been sharing with you how, and I asked her to, that she would share with you how she prays in the Spirit and how we do. I mean, if you were with us, you'd say that's the most two boring people I've ever seen in my whole life. I mean, if you're in the car with us, if you were invisible in the car with us, when we go somewhere, let's just say we went out to eat somewhere, a lot of that time, either going or coming, one of the two ways, there's... There's not actual conversation going on a lot of times. There's prayer in the Spirit going on. Yeah. Or we're declaring something. I, I mean it. Now, I'm not saying all of it is like that. But I'm telling you, there's not a, a time that I can recall that in the car there ain't some praying going on. Because you, you need to be praying about something. People say, I wouldn't, you know, Pastor, I don't even believe in, in, in all this stuff. I wouldn't pray about where I'm going to sit in a restaurant. I wouldn't pray about the restaurant. Let me tell you something. 
The day and time we live in, you better be praying about the restaurant. You better be praying about the grocery store. You'll get shot and killed going to the grocery store if you ain't praying. You better be led by the Spirit when to go and when to stay at home. You better be led. You're, you're led safely. You're led safely. No weapon formed against you will prosper, Isaiah 54 and 17. You're consciously and unconsciously led by the Spirit. Hmm. We need to stop having the case sera sera attitude. And we need to cover it in prayer and in the word. Stand at least on one scripture. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you another one. Can I give you another one? I know some of you have heard it before, some of you haven't. When we take our dogs to the vet, we're not trying to be all spiritual. We're trying to save money. And we want the dogs healed. If there, there's something wrong with them, we want them healed. And we want that doctor to know what he's doing. That vet. I'm serious. I don't want him to experiment. I want him to know. Can I, can I say it that way? Okay. We, we were praying about our little dog, one of our dogs, Abby. And we had taken her to the vet for the same thing three times. This third time. And this, this last time, we, we were putting the scriptures on this one. I mean, we, we always say we have the favor of God, the favor of man. I mean, we, we were praying different things. But we, we did some, some different kind of praying on this one. We, we went a little more in depth. And because um, it was getting a little more serious. And anyway, this vet, this is no lie. I don't think you, you probably never had this happen to you. I never had. This vet got her, and you know, we explained to her, you know, this is the third time we brought her in for the same thing. He said, Yeah, yeah, I know. And then uh, he comes back to us, and he said, And we've been praying that he's going to know the exact thing. He has perfect knowledge. Uh, 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 Colossians 1 and 9, perfect knowledge. He has perfect knowledge of this situation. You know, that's what you need to pray for somebody that's, that's helping you. That they have perfect... That's what we need to pray for us. Amen. That we have perfect knowledge of situations that we don't in our natural mind have it. So um, anyway, he, he came back to us and he said, I, I know the problem. He said, we're going to have to bring her back in. But I know the problem. And I, as we asked him what it was. He said, for myself, he said, I wanted to know what was up. And he said, I want to get the root of this thing. And he said, I did an x-ray that I paid for. I didn't mention anything to him about money. I never said anything. I never complained about price. I never said anything to him whatsoever about money. We have the favor of God, the favor of man. The favor of God surrounds us like a shield. He said, at my own expense, I did an x-ray. And he said, and I had a hunch. And he said, there's a tooth. Now, she had had her teeth pulled a few years ago, like almost all of them. And... Um, he said there's a tooth and it's, uh, there's a problem with that tooth. And it's causing her to have problems in other areas. And that was the cause of the other problems, not the tooth itself. He said, I need to pull that tooth. He said, I need to give her an antibiotic for it. And then, and then I believe she'll be all right. He did. She was. And she is still all right. But she never had that problem again. And you can say, well, I wouldn't do that. I know. You'd pay $10,000 trying to find the problem. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Hello? Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. You, you tell me Jesus. you're going to have a surgery on your body and you're going to believe everything that doctor told you. I, 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 I'm okay with the doctors. I believe in doctors. The doctors are sent to, to bring healing to us. But you tell me I'm not going to be praying about it? You bet I am. You bet I'm going to cover his hands. I'm going to cover everything that goes on in that operating room. I'm going to say that man's got perfect knowledge of this situation. I declare he's there is favor and flow. We got favor with him. We got flow in this situation. There's flow between him and whoever he's working with. I declare his hands are anointed by Almighty God. He's anointed to do this. His mind, the eyes of his understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. I declare in the name of Jesus he has perfect knowledge of this situation. Even things that his medical knowledge has not taught him. I declare in the name of Jesus he leans on the Spirit of God. And I said he draws it from the Spirit of God. I bind complications. I bind premature death. In the name of Jesus, I lose peace, harmony. I don't want any kind of confusion going on in, the, in this surgery. You understand? Confusion is of the devil, and the devil will bring confusion and division. So we got to take authority. It can't be just case Sarah, Sarah. We got to take authority in prayer. God's given us authority. We got to take it. We got to be more intentional on our prayers. Amen. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. On the outcome of situations, Lord, 
Pastor Sharon, I got a lot more. Mm -mm. Come on. I'm not supposed to give it. She's supposed to come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Glory to God. Keep on going. <laughs> awesome, praise God. Hallelujah. So we're talking today about prayer. Continue on. This is part three, and, and we're kind of focusing in today about praying the Word of God, praying scriptures in our prayers. So, you know, we all want our prayers to be effective, don't we? We want them to be powerful. I, I kind of thought about it as uh, uh, having a punch behind your prayers, you know, a punch of the Word of God. In, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, uh, God says that I hasten my word to perform it. Yes. Amen? Yes. So he hastens his word, and I love that. So when we pray the Word of God, we're actually praying God's will because God's Word is his will. And when we pray the Scriptures, we are releasing that power. We are releasing the power of the Word of God. Amen? And um, John chapter 6 and verse uh, 63, it says, uh, God says, My words are spirit and they are life. So the word is alive, isn't it? It is alive and it is uh, full of power. So using the word of God is a powerful thing. We're pa uh, packing punch behind Amen. our prayers. Amen. So, And then uh, another translation says, my words are spirit words. I love that. My yeah. words are spirit words and life making. So God's word makes life. Amen? Amen. So when we are praying and we're using the scriptures, we're using the word of God, we are making life in our prayers for whatever we're praying for, whether it be for us, whether we're praying for somebody else. In their situation, we want to have life-making words. Amen? The power of the Word of God. So praying the Scripture is praying life into whatever you're praying about. It's, it's, uh, we're praying the will of God. Amen? And so we want to pray God's will. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people, uh, maybe not intentionally, they're praying their will. But when we pray the Word of God, we are praying God's will will amen so we can't get that messed up um but you know we know that god's word is powerful it is a sword against the enemy amen so we want to pray scriptures that are are uh when the enemy comes against us that are powerful against the enemy yes. the word of god can stop what the enemy is trying to do yes. amen and the word of god can uh all, it can uh, nullify uh, what the enemy has or break i want to say yes. the word of god can break things that the enemy has already done amen so we've got to see the word of god as powerful it is powerful and so you know when the accuser comes against us uh, or whoever that we're praying for, I, well, we like to pray uh, Isaiah 54, 17. And this is, and Pastor brought the scripture out, and this is in the New Living Translation. It says, No weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, you know, no weapon, is, you know, when we pray that, that is a powerful prayer. Maybe, you know, even words have been spoken against you. Uh, a lot of times in your childhood, maybe uh, that wrong things have been spoken against you. And I know it has me too, and, and, and I'll probably use, I'm sure, words that I should not have been using. Uh, unconsciously not thinking about what I'm saying. But, you know, when, when those things happen, we can pray Isaiah 54 and 17. Amen? Amen. Wrong words are weapons. Mm -hmm. And when wrong words are used against us, used in a negative way, we can declare and pray Isaiah 54, 17. You know, those words have no power over me. Those words, you know, they can't, uh, they can't succeed, That's right. amen, because God has already broken that over our life, amen? amen, and the power of God is living big on the inside of me. Uh -huh. It has replaced, the word of God has replaced those negative words, 
And so you can silence the accuser with, with, those, uh, with the word of God. And you can break the power of those words. Yeah. Break the power of the wrong words that have been spoken over you. No weapon. Those words will not, they cannot be formed against me. They cannot have any power over me. Amen. Praise God. And so pray that over yourself. Pray that over uh, whoever you're praying for. You don't know what has been spoken over that person. You don't know why, you know, uh, they're going in the wrong direction. You don't know why they're going through the things that they're going through. But you might need to just bind, you know, the words that have been spoken against them. Bind those weapons. Those weapons have no power over you. So, and then, uh, Pastor and I, uh, we pray this scripture a lot. Ephesians 1 and 18. And uh, the King James says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so I want to read that also in uh, the Passion Translation. It says, I pray that the light of God's will illuminate the eyes of your imagination Flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy one. So, you know, when we pray, uh, you know, we use this scripture a lot. And, uh, you know, when, whenever we need wisdom in an area, whenever we need direction in an area, uh, you know, we pray this scripture you know, or, or if we're praying for somebody else, somebody comes to us saying, I need direction. You know, they need wisdom. They need direction. They need to know God's will. We will pray that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. Amen. We need enlightenment, don't we? Amen. Amen. We need that enlightenment of what God's will is and his direction. We don't want the direction of our, our uh, what what seems to be good you know that sounds good that looks good everything seems good about this situation but is it God's will is it God's direction and that's what we want that enlightenment of God's will so you know when we're praying we pray that scripture over the others and also you know we pray the scripture over people that need salvation People that are not saved, they need enlightened, don't they? They need yes. their, the eyes of their understanding to be enlightened. And they need to know that, that uh, God is uh, calling them, amen, and that they have that, the, the eyes of their understanding. As Pastor was talking about that mechanic. It was like all of a sudden his eyes were open. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. So when we pray for our loved ones or whoever we're praying for, that their eyes will be open. Just like, you know, that, uh, he, like he was talking about, or the, like it's a revelation. Oh, okay. Okay, I need God, you know. And so we pray also for people that they're saved, but maybe they're not in close fellowship with God. Uh -huh. We pray this prayer over uh -huh. them, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. Amen. Oh, I, I, you know, I've drifted too far away from God. I'm not where I need to be in the Lord. I need to be closer to God. Lord, I pray that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened to the hope of His glory, to His direction, to living for God, to have that close relationship with Him. So we pray that. That is a powerful prayer right there, a powerful scripture to pray over people. So they, you know, we, we need uh, enlightenment. We need wisdom. We need knowledge. We need understanding of God's will, amen, of his way of doing things. Not just man's way, but God's way. So, you know, when we pray for somebody, also um, we pray for people that are facing a life-threatening situation. You know, maybe they've gotten a bad report from the doctor or something. We pray Psalms 118 and 17. Well, of course we pray, you know, by Jesus' stripes they are healed. You know, we pray for the healing first, but then we'll pray if it's a, a life-threatening situation, we'll pray Psalms 118 and 17. And this is actually the Passion Translation. It says, I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Amen. So when we Amen. pray for somebody that is in a life, a life and death situation, we will pray over them and declare 
They will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen? We speak that word over them. The enemy is trying to steal their life. So we're speaking power words over them. We're speaking the word of God. We're speaking what God's word says. Amen. They will not die, but they will live. And so uh, that's what one of the main scriptures. We will pray over people who are facing life and death. So when we pray the word of God, it releases great power. We want to release that power. You know, the, the, you might be full of the word of God. You might have so much word in you. But until you speak it out, you're not releasing that power. We want to release it in our prayer life. Amen. We want it to pack punch, don't we? Uh -huh. We want it to be a powerful prayer. And we want to set the boundaries. Enemy, you cannot have this person. You cannot do this in their life. You know, we, we, put a, we, we put the word of God around that person. We cover them with prayer, with that power of the word of God. And so uh, in Isaiah 55 and 11, this is the New Living Translation. It says, it is the same with my word. I will send it out and it will always produce fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Amen? That is a, a how powerful the Word of God is. So when you're praying the Word of God, you're sending out the Word of God. Uh, you know, and it says that it will produce fruit. Amen? And it says that it will prosper where the Word of God is sent out. It will prosper. And then it says, you know, that it will accomplish what I have sent it out to do. Isn't that powerful? Yes, praying the God. scripture, praying the word of God. Sometimes you might not feel like saying the scripture. You know, sometimes we get in a panic in situations. But, you know, the word of God will cut. It is a powerful weapon. Yes. It will cut through what the enemy is trying to do. Yes. Amen. It will break those things that the enemy has already done in your life. Yes. Amen. We say God is a chain breaker. Yes. Well, that is what the word of God is today. Yes. Amen. Yes. It is a chain breaker. Yes. It is full of power. And when we speak that power out of our mouth, amen. It changes things. Amen. The Word of God changes things. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. So we want to remember when we're praying, Pastor, if you'll come up, when we're praying, you know, we're, we've been talking about prayer. This is a, the part three of prayer. We've been talking about speaking, uh, uh, praying in the Spirit, and which Pastor and I have shared we do a lot of. And thank God, you know, for being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. A lot of people God. don't understand being uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. We're good. I have heard people say, well, you know, I, I don't think it's important because um, so-and-so uh, got the, the Holy Spirit, and but they haven't changed. It doesn't say anything about the Holy Spirit changing anybody. No. That's us. We have to do the changing through the Word of God. We have to change ourselves through the power of the Word of God. But praying in the Spirit is when you don't know how to pray. You don't know the best way to pray about something. You don't know the, the uh, will of God a lot of times in a situation. And a lot of times people, are, when they don't pray the Spirit about it, they don't know how to pray. They're praying a lot of times. They're praying wrong. Yeah, that's right. They are just that's praying true. wrong. That's good. So uh, we, don't, we don't know it all, do we? And so a lot of times when we're in that situation, we're facing a situation for ourselves or for somebody else. Pray in the Spirit if you don't know how to pray in, in your natural. Of course, we pray in our natural all the time. And I, we've told you all that. We pray in our natural uh, language and our understanding, as the Word of God says. Pray in the Spirit and pray with the understanding. Amen. But there are so many times where we don't, know what to pray or how to pray. And so praying in the Spirit is where it takes it up. Mm -hmm. It's praying the perfect will of God. Yes. Perfect will of Amen. God. And then we want to add punch to our prayers. Amen. 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 And so we want to pray using the Word of God. Find a scripture that goes along with whatever you are praying about. And I brought out a few of them today. There's so many, so, so, so many more. There's no way you could cover all the 
the scriptures you can use. But they're in the Word of God. And as Pastor said, pray and ask the Holy Spirit uh, what scriptures do, can I pray over this situation. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit will let you know. It will come up on the inside of That's you. That's right. Praise God. He is so good to us, isn't he? He, is. he gives us everything that we need. Praise the Lord. So praying the Word of God, releasing that power to go along with what we're praying about. Great power is released when we pray the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we just love you today. We love you, Father. We thank you, Father God, for all you've done, all your goodness, Father God. We thank you for our inheritances, Father God, the things that you have given us, Father, that we can, uh, we can grab hold of. And Father, we thank you for your word, your powerful, powerful word, Father God. We thank you for it, God, and we give you all glory. And Father, I just pray for each and every person that are here in this sanctuary and those that are watching by Facebook this morning, Father God. I just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them, Father. I pray for each and every need today, Father, whatever that need might be. Father, I, whether it be comfort, some people need comfort today. They need comfort, and that's the comfort that only you can give. And Father, I pray right now that you move and minister in their hearts and in their lives, Father God, bringing that comfort and that peace to them, Father. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. He is good, isn't he? Amen. Pastor, you got anything you want to add? No. Okay. Thank you again so much for joining us today by Facebook. We'll see you again Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you, and happy Father's Day to you.